Welcome back to Metalcraft by Design. Today I want to walk you through one of the many techniques I use to make custom metal signs. Today we're going to make a metal sign with the silhouette of the ferry boat Kalakala. Here's a picture of the ferry and the boat sailed on the Puget Sound from 1935 to 1967 and it was known for its art deco, futuristic styling, as well as a lot of vibration. So come with me and I'll walk you through the process that I use to make custom metal signs. So ferry boat signs are something I've done before and in the past typically what I look for to start with are pictures that have a really good side profile or silhouette. I'll typically go to Google and I'll search for pictures of the ship that are taken at a right angle to the waterline of the ship. That way I can get a good proportional silhouette. Uh, here's a couple pictures here. I'm gonna save that one. One of the hardest parts doing ships when you're trying to find a good picture of the ship to use as a reference for your model it's hard to find a picture that has everything below the waterline as well as above. I mean, pretty much you're looking for a picture of a ship that's in dry dock um, or during new construction. So here's a picture of a, a wooden model of the Kalakala. We're going to save this and use it as a reference as well. So once you find a few pictures of whatever it is you want to model, in this case it's going to be a ferry boat, save those pictures to your desktop or to a folder and I specifically use Fusion 360 for everything I do in the shop. It's an amazing tool. I use it for modeling, 3D printing, tool paths for my Shop Saber Sidekick, as well as my CNC router. It really is an amazing tool. So today we're going to be using Fusion 360 and we're going to be using these pictures that we saved to generate a silhouette and ultimately make a steel sign that resembles the Kalakala. All right, we've got Fusion 360 open. First thing I'm going to do is start by changing my view to a top view. From here, I'm going to create a sketch and select my sketch plane. One thing I like to do when I make different signs is I like to start by creating an envelope that I want that sign to fit in. So in this application, I want to do a ferry sign, and I think I want it to be no bigger than 36 inches long. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a rectangle with a hidden line and I'm going to create it from the center point of my sketch and I'm going to do 36 by 18. And this is going to give me just the envelope that I'm going to work within when I draw my sketch for my sign. So once I have my envelope established I'm going to come up here to insert and I'm going to insert a canvas. From here I'm going to pick one of those pictures that I found on the internet of the claw claw with a nice side profile. Let's try this one. Put it there. This way I can use my envelope to get a reference for how big my sign is going to be and so I'm shooting for 36 inches or less. So now that I've got my canvas and my work envelope established, now I can start drawing over the top of my canvas and this is how I'm going to begin drawing my sign. I'm going to create a sketch and I'm going to set the sketch plane to be right up top of my canvas.
So we're getting close to being done with the profile of the ship. I've got all the windows down and I've got everything above the waterline done. But now this canvas isn't gonna do us any good for what's below the waterline. So we're gonna add a different canvas, which is actually gonna be a picture of a model of this ship. And we're gonna use that to get the rest of the ship's profile. And here we can kind of see what we've got so far. Now I've done the profile of the ship off an actual picture and I found that this model, it's close but it's not exact and, and that's the reason why I didn't use it for everything is I wanted to use an actual picture of the ship to do the profile of the sketches are done, I'm going to use the extrude button up in the top left to create a body from our sketch. And I'm going to make it the same thickness as the sheet metal I'm using to cut it out with, and that's going to be about 90 thousandths, so 0 0.09. And we're going to hit OK. Here's the start of our sign. Now let's come back and cut out the lettering. I'm going to turn my sketches back on, and I'm only going to turn on the sketch with the Kalakala letters. From here, I'm going to pick those letters and extrude them through the sign to cut them out. Here's our sign and I went ahead and bridged all the letters. Now remember, we modeled this at the exact same thickness as the material we're gonna be cutting this sign out of, which is 14 gauge steel. So from here, we can generate a tool path to actually cut this out. We're gonna go up to the top left and we're gonna click on the design tab and we're gonna go over to the manufacturer tab. So once we're in the manufacturer tab, we're gonna go up to the top left and click setup. Then we're gonna click new setup. From here, we're gonna select our machine and I have my Shop Saver Sidekick 8. So I'll pick that. And then I'm going to go down here to Model, and I'm going to select my model. And then I'm also going to go to Box Point. Box Point is just the origin of the work coordinates for this sign, and I like to put them in the bottom left. So that means when I set up the machine, when I wherever I put this point, is going to be the bottom left of my sign, just like this. So when I go to the machine and set X, Y, 0, that's the starting point, that's going to be this point on the sign. No 
additional stock. Okay, hit OK. Now the machine's set up. Next, we're going to go to cutting and we're going to do a 2D profile. Go to tool. Here's our shop saber. We're going to select shop saber again as our plasma cutter. I'm going to set it to high quality. Now we're going to select our geometry. And one feature I love about Fusion 360 is that I can model a sign exactly how I want it to look and I can pick that whole body just like that. And it will know exactly what spots are supposed to be positive and negative space. I don't have to tell it what side of the line to cut on. I don't need to tell it where to start and end. It'll figure that all out for me by the parameters I set, which is really nice. Smoothing. Okay, so we got a green check mark next to our setup tab and a green check mark next to our 2D profile tab. So from here, there's one last step, and that's going to be what's called the post processor. All the post processor is is a set of guidelines and rules for the machine. With CNC machines, they run off of what's called G and M code. G for generic, which means all G code is the same between CNC machines. They mean the, the code means the same thing. M code is for machine code, so machine specific. So like you might have a CNC lathe and a CNC mill and they read G code the same, it means the same thing. But M codes are specific to that machine. So it might be like turning the spindle on or turning the coolant on and off or bringing the plasma cutter down to touch off and set the tool height. So the post processor is specific for the shop saber and it's got its own machine codes and that's what you process your file with so that it has all the right G and M codes and doesn't make any mistakes. So we're gonna come up here we're going to actions, go to post process, and our post processor file is already loaded up here. We're going to give the file a, a number here. Let's just go 5000, and we're going to hit post. So I saved the file on my flash drive, and I plugged it into the computer that controls the shop saber. I'm going to open it in the shop saber control. From here, we're going to set our X and Y zero with the torch and we're going to put it at that bottom left corner like I did when I was drawing it in Fusion. Okay, that looks pretty good. So then I'm going to hit zero. Now we're ready to run. So here's our sign. I actually cut one out last night as a comparison because I wanted to show you guys a little trick that I used to remove mill scale. A lot of you guys might know that vinegar works really well to remove mill scale, so I have this big stock tank and it's got industrial strength cleaning vinegar. And here's the one I cut out last night. So here's our finished sign. I did some sanding, buffing, and added some brass gym stock behind the letters to make them pop, and I'm pretty happy with what I came up with.
If you or someone you know would be interested in a sign like this, send me an email at metalcraftbydesign at gmail.com. So that's just one of the techniques I use to make custom metal signs. If you want your own custom metal sign, send me an email at metalcraftbydesign at gmail.com. Thanks for watching Metalcraft by Design, and I'll see you on the next one.